Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back to another color preamp. And this was a popular series the first time I did it. And it was a circuit that was based off of one at, I think it was Cascade Tubes. I'll put it up here if it's something different. I'll put the link in the description to the web page as well. And it was a really unique preamp. The OG one that I've built several of and I used for a while. Somebody emailed me, was looking for a preamp, and I only had one left. And it was the one I was using with my KT120 monoblocks. And then I thought, hey, I'm supposed to be in business. I can't hang on to stuff even if it's my personal stuff. And so... I sold the last one that I had, and now I don't have a preamp for my own amplifiers, but that's okay. I've got plenty of stuff to listen to. But anyway, got one of these chassis left, and sadly the guy that built these chassis for me has moved to Portugal. So, yeah, he's not going to be making me any more chassis. I'm sure I can find someone else local to make some for me, but wanted to finish this one up and I was working on it one night late and I was using my Greenlee punches to punch the holes in the chassis and I got like all of these drilled right for the transformer which is a 269JX Hammond and let's see what the specs are on this thing it's a 500 volt center tapped at 70 milliamps or 69 milliamps and then it's got two and a half amps at 6.3 volts. And so it doesn't have a five volt whining. So I've been using the 6.3 volt nine pin rectifier tube, a six CA4, I think it is. Anyway, nine pin tubes for the dry for these preamp tubes and the rectifier. And I picked up the wrong punch, and I punched these the wrong size. And so now I can't put 9-pin tubes in them. And I could have bought another top plate, but I decided I'm going to build one of these with octal tubes and use some 6S and 7s. And I've got some of these Horizon 6S and 7s. I've actually got some of the Summit top shelf 6S and 7s. I got a whole slew of other ones and 6s and 7s are normally a really good sounding audio tube and i think they're close enough to a 12 au7 that we're not going to have to make a lot of changes to the circuit you could leave in the comments below if you think there's like major changes that need to be made to this circuit or do you think a 6s and 7 will just plug in and I'm going to go over the plate curves and look at the dissipation we're running them at and all that stuff before I decide. But yeah, let's, let me hear from you guys what you think. And then I found a 8-pin rectifier tube that will run on 6.3 volts. It only needs 0.6 amps from the 6.3. So we've got plenty between the heaters on these two driver tube or preamp tubes and this rectifier tube. To fit within the two and a half amps that this will handle and it was a 6x5 now it only handles 70 milliamps which isn't very much for a rectifier tube but these aren't going to be anywhere close to it this transformer only makes 70 milliamps anyway so it's going to be plenty of rectifier tube and we'll have all octal tubes in it and it'll look sort of like this one and so it's going to look very different than it did with the nine pan tubes and if you're not familiar with this color preamp or what it's designed for, it's intended to create some pleasing second order harmonic distortion in the signal path between like a CD DAC and solid state amp or even like those KT120s that are super low distortion amplifiers, especially when they're used in the range I'm listening to them in. And so they could use a little tube coloration. And that's what this 
color preamp does, and that's why it's called colors. It does color the sound a little bit, but in a good way. And the way it does that is the original design had the full signal go into the grid of the preamp tubes. So they're running basically full blast. And unlike most preamps that have the volume control between the RCA jacks and the input tube or driver tube, these were just running, you know, full signal. And then you attenuate the signal after the cathode follower between the cathode of the output section or the output triode and the output RCA jacks, the potentiometer is there. And so you're adjusting the signal after the tubes have done their magic creating the pleasing harmonic distortion or the warmth and stuff that people love about tubes. What I found though was it was kind of an all or nothing thing. You, you know, it was, you put this in, you get all the harmonic distortion or you take it out and you get none of it kind of a thing. And I wanted to make that level of coloration adjustable. So I added some little small high quality, the mil spec potentiometers next to the input RCA jack so that you can adjust the input signal going to the preamp tube, which in turn adjusts how much harmonic distortion that it makes while still adjusting the main volume on the output. And by having the volume control on the output, the harmonic distortion stays the same at all volume levels. So you get that nice warmth even at low listening levels, which with a normal preamp, it might sound like super clean at low volume and then sound better as you turn it up, but you may not want to listen to it at this sound pressure level. I'm stuck on my finger now. Um, you may not want to listen to it. Ah, broke my finger now. Anyway, you may not want to listen to it at this volume level. You want to listen to it down here and then it doesn't have the nice tube warmth. So this solves that problem. And at the same time with the adjusters on the input signal, it allows you to adjust how much coloration you want to add to the signal. And it's been a fairly popular product. I've sold probably a half a dozen of these things. And I've got this, you know, top plate that I drilled wrong and so it's prompted me to build this 6SN7 version and see what that sounds like. And who knows, that may be what I do going forward is just build 6SN7 ones. May go back to the 6CA4 9 pin rectifier tube, but who knows, I may like this other one better anyway. So that's kind of where we're going with this. And again, if you've got some experience on using a 6S and 7 in place of a 12AU7, put it in the comments or send me an email. I am going to kind of go through the plate curves and we'll plot those out in the next video and see what the difference is and if there is any to worry about and how to adjust the circuit to compensate if we need to and that sort of thing. But I don't think it's going to be rocket science figuring this out. And we'll have another version of these able to be built. So that's what this video series is going to be about. And I know I'm kind of starting a bunch of stuff at once here. But I think it'll help inspire me to get moving on some of these projects. And not just get stuck on ones that kind of doing them one at a time thing. We'll see how that pans out. It might be a bad idea. But who knows? We'll see here. And... If you are enjoying this, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. I need like 500 more or 400 more subs to hit 20K. And that'll be a nice milestone for the channel. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters and other folks that support the channel with donations or memberships or buying products or whatever. I appreciate all you guys. And you guys that regularly watch the channel, you're what make this possible. So thanks again. And until the next video, 
Have a nice day.